people don't have a, you know what it is? It's two reasons. One is because fans as a rule, and I know I'm going to throw a lot of them under the bus, but I really don't care. They don't have a strong sense of who's good and who's not. And, a lot, and the rest of them all listen to people on the air who are probably more dumb and don't have a sense of who's good and who's not. And so they come up with these crazy conclusions. And now today, because everybody's thinking out of the box, to me, thinking out of the box too far just means you're out of your mind. You're just doing it just to do it. Or you're just nuts. It's one of the two. Maybe both in a lot of cases. There's just right and wrong and good players and bad players. It's not that hard. They're just going, well, what about this? And what about that? They go, okay, uh, we'll call the insane asylum. We'll, stop. we'll pick you up later today. No, like, what are you talking about? I'll give them your address. Everything will be fine. Take your way. Especially <laughs> in sports. I mean, right. there's, there's this striving to complicate it. It's, yes. It's sports. <laughs> you right. play a game. Right. Ball. Ball goes in hole. Ball. Balls can't run with That's two it. spots. It's simple. Catch ball. <laughs> it's simple. It's not science. You know, all these kids with the analytics. I mean, look, you majored in math. Go be a mathematician somewhere. But don't get, but stay out of sports because it's, it has nothing to do with it. Because you can't judge heart. You can't judge people. You, you don't know what's really going on. And, and they're not judging situations. They're only judging what's in their, on the paper in front of them. It's got to stop. I was just talking to a guy at Friendly's. He's older than both of us. I'm sitting there eating my ice cream, and he's like, well, the Mets stink. He's a Met fan. And, he was, and I went to the Met game last night. Made everybody laugh. I even started rooting for the Dodgers because about a week ago, I finally had enough of them after, since, you know, four years, since four years old. I finally had enough of them losing and stinking. And I started rooting for the Dodgers. And all the Dodger friends were sitting around me laughing, and I had them all rolling. I had them rolling so much that they wanted to take my picture before I left. They were mad that I left. And, you know, Trey, uh, Turner hit, uh, had like two hits, and, and Justin Turner had two home runs. And he admitted after the game, I'm still mad the Mets cut me, so I love beating them. And which he never said before that, which I loved. And, uh, and, you know, I'm just sitting there going, they can't hit. And, and this couple behind me, they admit it to me. They're like, you know, we, we travel with the Dodgers. We follow them. We go ballpark to ballpark. We're from Los Angeles. I go, right. And the girl looked at me and goes, this is the first night we're actually winning every time we go. We always lose. No matter who we play. We were in Milwaukee last week. We lost. Went to the White Sox. We lost. Da, 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 da. I go, you're not losing here. This is the – this is your – this is where it's happening. And she goes, I would go to my therapist and talk, oh, you didn't need a therapist. You needed a Met ticket. That would have solved all your problems. They all would have went away. You would have won. You would have been happy. You would have left happy. Is your team suffering from losing? The Mets ticket. The cure no, of the ales. I'm suffering from losing. Not them. They're so stupid. They don't even realize they're losing. No, like, it's funny. And I, I was joking with her. I don't see a therapist, but I go, when I saw my therapist, I found that he was a meth and I told him to lay on the couch. I started taking notes. I knew there was something wrong. I looked at him and go, you're in bad shape. You look terrible. <laughs> and they were rolling. Everything I was saying, they were just rolling. And, and you know, my friend, like, he wants to put a DraftKings app on his phone. I go, hey, DraftKings, how much you want to bet that Alonso strikes out? Next bitch, he strikes out, swings and misses. He just looked at me and goes, that wasn't funny. <laughs> you know, and I was, I mean, Everybody was laughing. They were rolling. Well, Bob, and, I mean, like, come on, man. I mean, you got UCLA with all the titles, Bo uh, Boston Celtics, all the titles. KC yeah. is the team now. I mean, you're good. You, you got to have at least one team that doesn't win everything. Well, the Mets have more than and Thank God I've got those other teams. Because, like, I was joking with them. I go, we're all going to go home tonight and check the signs and find out why I'm not the town drunk. Because these guys are losing so much. I don't drink. I don't get it. If anybody's going to make me drink, it's going to be the Mets. <laughs> We're going to find out why, you know, why, why it didn't happen. But you're right, though. But, you, you know, for my Celtics, you know, they don't win as much as they did. But you're right. They used to win every year. And so did UCLA. <laughs> they just did. We do have the most national titles. Us in North Carolina won them, too. But, I mean, no, they, the Mets, they more than can make up. Because if you think about it, 
the Mets, the Jets, the Knicks. They're all the same team. They just wear different uniforms, different times of the year. They suck, all of them. They do. Shoot, the, the, the Knicks didn't even want to change their colors. They wear orange and blue like the Mets. The Jets, they used to play at the same stadium as the Mets. <laughs> right? Shea Stadium. And last night, last night, LaGuardia decided to fly the planes right overhead again like the old Shea Stadium. Because since they moved it a little bit, they weren't flying them over that area. But last night, they were flying them right in the middle of the game overhead. I could have grabbed the wing and took off, which halfway through the game I wanted to do because it sucked. I just would have grabbed the wing. See you guys. Got to go. You know, but um, I mean, it, it was it was terrible. They, but I we laughed. And they got clocked. They lost 14 to 4. You know what was funny about it? As I'm walking, as I'm ready to turn, I took the picture with the guys. I turned around, I heard crack. I looked, uh, the outfield was looking up the balls in the upper deck. I go, oh, that's one for the road. I mean, no. are the Mets the most disappointing team this year in terms of expectations going into the season? Um, well, I guess because I'm a Mets fan, they're never dis- the most disappointing to me because I, 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 re- I expect suck every year. So if they're good, I'm shocked. But um, the most disappointing team, they may be. I mean, um, because I, I just sort of, I recall there stuff. being some hype about the Mets. They had that great pitching staff. There was there was some hope for the Mets going in the season. Yeah, but you know what? I, when I talked to the old guy at, at Friendlies, and he's a waiter, and his son may come on our show. He writes books for the Mets. He goes, "Why do the Mets keep focusing on pitching? We can't." I go, "Hit!" And he goes, "That's it." And he goes, "Go, we need hitting. We can never, ever, ever hit." I go, "You're smarter than everybody else I've ever met." You're absolutely right. And then he quoted John Wooden. I don't even know it was Wooden. And he, goes, he, he goes, you know what? He goes, um, great teams make adjustments. Bad teams make excuses. You know who said that? And I'm eating my ice cream. Didn't realize it was Wooden. He goes, John Wooden. I go, I should have known. <laughs> you know, and then, and then like, and he's just telling me how bad they are because they can't hit. I go, I've been saying this for years. And so the waitress came over and I go, you know the old saying about pitching and defense stops good hitting? She went, yeah. And I go, and everybody soaks it up. Yeah. Players, coaches, fans, they all soak it up. I go, the original quote, the second part of the quote's never quoted. She goes, there's a second part? I go, yeah. The pitcher that said it in the 60s was a Yankees pitcher. And he goes, good pitching stops good hitting. And vice versa. Somehow, the vice versa got lost. I go, the Yankees have always done it. Ruth, they had the money. And that's what the guy he goes, they've always spent the money on the right guys. We, I go, I know. We spend money on, on – we overpay for C and D players. We'll let the A and Bs go. He goes, exactly. I go, but we did give Mr. Met an extension, and the ball boy got a raise. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the bat boy, you can bet that's coming. That's where all our money's going. We're a joke. We're a joke. We gave a bobblehead night to a guy who's been off the team for 20 years and only played for three. You know why? Because we 25 years, Bobby Bonilla, we've been paying him until this year. Now, how was it, Bob, how was the crowd? How, how big was the crowd last night? Very big. It was very crowded. Oh, See, what, in- what incentive is there to win when you're filling the stadium 80 nights a game, uh, 80 nights a year? You know what's funny, too? All week, I'm going to tell you, I've been Twittering the Mets owner. And I kept saying, I'm going on Sunday night. I want a meeting with you. I can change all this. And he never got back to me. He never. And every night I would hawk him. Lost again. Can't hit again. Stink again. Still think I'm not right. So finally, I gave him one last uh, direct message on Twitter. And I said, I'm coming tonight. I'll have a meeting with you. My brother knows Sandy Alderson. I never heard a word. So the Mets saved the best for that one because they got destroyed. They were down 6 nothing in the second inning. Every Max Muncy hit two homers. Turner hit two homers. Will Smith, Will Smith comes up. I look at the guy behind him and go, he's been really hot lately. Crack. Smacks home run just like that. He just looked at me and goes, uh-huh. <laughs> they were down. They got destroyed last night. And they were, the Dodgers were laughing at them. Shoot, I was laughing at them. I had the whole section laughing. Half were Dodger, half were Mets. I'm seriously wondering what the incentive is for some of these New York Metro teams to win and pay more for players when they're filling the arenas and the stadiums. The Knicks still pack it in. That's a, you got to pay a premium price to see the Knicks, even when they're absolute That's garbage. Right. That's right. I mean, I mean, what's the incentive? I mean, if the Mets are getting good crowds every game and they're losing, 
Okay, money's being made. I I I wonder about that. The Rangers, yeah, uh, they uh, Rangers the hockey team, they fill up that garden too. I think pretty good, pretty well. Oh, oh no, that's but there's no incentive. You know what? The guy at Friendly said was right. It's never going to change because they don't care. They don't want to win. They just want your money and they want you in there. Yeah, just get as in the door, spend, going, drink your beers, get your food. You got 50,000, 60,000 people 80 times a year. And the incentive is we all stop going and they start losing money. That's it. You got to stop going, Mets fans. You got to you gotta get to get band together and say enough is enough. We're tired of losing. Who's uh, who's the top dog as it stands? Anyone making moves? Well, the Yankees are making – they're winning. I mean, you know, just when I think Chicago should have and, – and the cornfield game was great. It ended great. It was historic. The White Sox won. Um, they beat the Yanks. But the Yanks are just, they can, they can hit. They beat them two out of three. They're going to make the playoff. And once the playoff comes, I don't trust the Yankees being out until they're out. You know, I mean, Chicago was supposed to be the favorite in the American League this year going in, but I don't know. And the Red Sox are playing well. Schwarzer is playing for him now. But I don't know. I, I just kind of think that I'm worried about the Yanks. They're sitting there, you know, I'm worried about them. They're not as good as they were in the past, but they're still pretty damn tough. Houston's pretty good. I don't think they're going to do it, but they're they're good. But like I said, until the Yanks are out, I don't trust them. And how about the college gridiron, Bob? Any, uh, you've been following UCLA at all? Did you like my picks the other night with her? I did. I, I, I think UCLA has a great chance to knock off LSU. And like I said, I, I'm going to predict that it springboards Chip Kelly's successful tenure there. Now, I'm not he sure how... I'm not sure how old Chip Kelly is. Um, I'm going to guess he's in his early 60s. Right. And I'm wrong. He's actually a little younger. So he's only 57. So if he can get that program rolling and with momentum, you could ha- you could you could be looking at, you know, he was great in Oregon. If he can if he can get that momentum back for UCLA, you guys you guys could have your coach for a while. Yeah, well, he's got to do it. I mean, this is kind of his make or break year. If he doesn't do it now, who knows? He might not. Be uh, this is it. his third season, third or fourth. They, they have, that's key because if it's if it's his technically his third season, then his second season was COVID. And I mean, yeah. eh, you know, again, I throw that out the window. But I think that LSU game is going to be a nationally televised big. Yeah, you know, that's going to be a marquee game. A lot of eyeballs, and we're going to see if uh, that if UCLA launches into success or if you know they start doing a coaching search. But it's tough. LSU's got to. I mean, I don't know how often LSU plays in the West Coast, but that's they got to make that trip. Unfamiliar opponent, unique style. I mean, LSU's still trying to kind of get back on their feet after they lost all those players with the title. I could see UCLA. It wouldn't surprise me if UCLA won by like t- two touchdowns. Honestly, I don't know who they got coming in that's that good. Maybe they do. But um, we should be able to take we, – we've got a lot of good recruits coming in, so we should be able to. Now, do you uh, anticipate UCLA taking out USC this year? Well, I don't – is the game at home this year? Is it at UCLA or is it in SA? That's a good question. Yeah, that would help us a lot. Do you think that would be the kind of deciding factor? The whole, If they're playing at home, they'll beat them. If not, probably not. Yeah, yeah, I mean – I'd like to see what SC's got to. Um, I don't know if SC has a, a great coach, but they're definitely getting good recruits. I, I don't... So it's November 20th at USC, deep uh, in the season. That's a little harder. Let's, we'll see how, how it goes and how we do. Um, that'll make it a little harder for us to win. But who knows? I mean, he almost has to beat them because you know how it goes, Rob. Those coaches have got to – they have to win the, their important games, you know. Yeah, I think you see it. USC's coach might be on the hot seat too. I mean, they haven't won in a while, so I'm sure that that's not sitting well with them. No, they, they haven't. Have the power. Now, Bob, I don't know if you heard this, but there are there's talks going on, uh, loose talks between Pac-12, Big Ten, ACC people. Uh, yeah, we could it. potentially looking at the early machinations of a mega conference, not even a super conference, a mega conference. Are we going to end up with two mega conferences, Bob? Probably. Um, it seems like that's where all the money is and the, the schools want to make money. And, and they almost have to make money now because they're going to be paying some of these players anyway. I think that's kind of like, yeah, everything's getting swallowed up in, the, in a big conference. What will it do? It'll help some teams hurt others because they'll never get the recruits, you know? Um, but 
I could see it happening, sure. I could see it happening. And everybody wants to jump ship now, so wouldn't shock me at all. I'm definitely concerned about the private schools. There's not a lot of them in Division One left, right. and you know they don't have hundred thousand seat stadiums, a gazillion alumni, uh, state legislatures funding, and mega boosters. Uh, my concern is there's there's a lot of private schools that are still playing D one that could be left out. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's going to hurt some schools. Probably you know the smaller schools too. I mean, they're going to get even if they're a if they're in the conference and they're not all that good, yeah, they're, it's only going to get worse because, you know, I mean, the conference all of a sudden is massive. They're not going to go to the small schools unless they're, they're just so many of them that you can't fit anymore on your program. And then some of them kind of fall in your lap, some of the other schools, you know, but that's pretty much the only way. I don't know. Change is a foot, Bob. And I, for one, I will never wish the summer away. That being said, I am looking forward to football. I, I, I'm, I'm ready. It's mid-August. I'm, I'm ready to rock. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, I actually went and watched the preseason game, and I hate preseason everything. I yeah. didn't go that far. I can't get into exhibitions for, no, for football. No, I can't either. It's just I, I can't do my it. My friend invited me, and I stuck it out. I, I watched with him, and he was happy when the, when the Finns were winning, but then he got upset when they were losing at the end. And I'm thinking to myself, don't worry. It's only preseason, you know. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm taking your uh, predictions with a grain of salt regarding the Dolphins. Yes, I figured you were. Because let's be frank, you, you don't like that team. You despise them. They're your they're, they're the Dol- folks. And if in case you're not aware of, the Dolphins and Bills hate each other. Totally. When I was a little kid, they always won Miami, and you know, in the '70s, they always won. There better be no curses, Bob. And, and then you know. And then you know the how 80s. the Knicks fared when you just woke up in that morning. You hit. <laughs> yeah. And, and then in the 80s and 90s, it went the other way. Miami couldn't beat him. And that's when, my, that's when Marino played. And they just couldn't beat him. And since then, Miami really hasn't had a lot of luck against Buffalo. They really have that. But, but, and, and they were rivals from the old AFL. They were both in the AFL. So we'll see what happens. Now, folks, we're going to we're gonna sign off. So uh, stay tuned, folks. We may be la- relaunching the live feed uh, today, but we'll definitely, if we don't have Wayne Embry on today, we will have we'll him have on him soon. On. He's already pretty much committed, and uh, we'll see what happens. So for now, signing off for the sports show with Bob Spino, this is Rob. Stay Bye. tuned, folks. See ya. Bye now.